Ancient Training Systems presents the Strong History Podcast in association with Macmillan's Martial Arts and Iron Storm Kettlebells. And welcome to the first Strong History Podcast with me, James Roper, and Danny Macmillan. Right, so... Uh, Where do we start? So this podcast is uh, basically uh, us trying to sort of um, unlock some of the, um, I wouldn't say secrets, because it's not real, things aren't really secret, they're there in front of us, but just try and decipher and and, um, sort of try and draw parallels with with current training systems and and, um, how we maybe we can learn from ancient people and, and how we can incorporate that into our own training. Um, let's start off with, with what I do. Um, I am uh, a former strength athlete, uh, not a huge name, unfortunately, because I'm not hugely skilled, uh, <laughs> but uh, uh, who's now, you know, uh, becoming a bit more of a combat novice. I've um, I've done a bit of wrestling. Um, I've done quite a bit of powerlifting. Um, I, I've done a bit of strongman. Um, and I'm really, really into history. Um, I've even done a little bit of reenactment for a little while. So um, all of these things together have really sort of driven my, my love for both training and history. Um, and now I'm starting to train with um, Danny at his um, Gracie Jiu-Jitsu Academy. Um, Doing well as well. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, my background, I've been training since I was three years old. My father got me into it. He started school here in Plymouth in 1985. I've done boxing, kickboxing wrestling jiu-jitsu nearly every combat sport you can imagine so but i started mainly when i was younger in wing chun and jigen do which my dad was teaching at the time i've carried on ever since now we're opening a new academy very soon i thought i'd plug that one in <laughs> yeah, get them plugs in, get them plugs in. Yeah, <laughs> boy. but uh yeah so uh, those are that's a little bit of our background and we'll go into that a bit more later um but but really we sort of i, I sort of want to sort of explain the reason not a bit in a bit more detail the reason behind this podcast and um one of the things is is there's a lot of um separatism between sort of arts uh, and their their ideas that that their art is totally and utterly unique and uh, it's the only way to do things uh, and this t- generally doesn't come from uh people who mastered it or, or you know or, or even people who've sort of set up things it, it comes from people from the mid and low, low lower sort of tiers in arts um that, that their system is the only way to do it and and their system is, is totally and utterly unique and, and it's so different from everything else where when in reality um anything you've done somebody has probably done better a thousand years ago <laughs> you know in terms of martial arts and what have you because obviously they didn't do any electrical engineering a thousand years ago <laughs> yeah. but um, they make an ipod that way yeah <laughs> Um, well, they kind of they, they did. Yeah, that's not a totally accurate statement, what, but not in the way. IPod? Not like an iPod, no. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be interesting to yeah. see one. Yeah. Yeah. fifty feet tall. And I, oh yeah, an iPad in stone carved. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but and, and and that's you know and that, that's part of the reason um, we will be having a bit more, um, you know, a bit more pointed podcast. You know, we'll, we'll look at. Um, some things from the ancient and classical world. So we'll look at classical Greek pancreation. Um, we'll, we'll talk about um, wrestling, of course. It's probably one of the oldest forms of uh, combat sport in the world. Mm-hmm. If not the oldest, we'll, we'll go into boxing. Um, we'll, we'll look at um, weapon arts, though Though I have n- almost no experience with, with weapon arts. I I have have a lot, I've done a lot of the screamer, and uh, my dad taught me from yeah. a young age a lot of weaponry. I mean, I dabbled in fencing for about five weeks. Um, I went to the Croydon uh, Fencing Club, which was was good. Uh, it was, it was, you know, it was a real nice grassroots club, but it wasn't um, it wasn't my thing. Mm. You know, um, I, I was yeah, always not really like, built for fencing. No, not really. You need a big club and a yeah and a shield somewhere. I mean, if, if you if any of you guys can, can well eventually we'll have video but, but uh, to give sort of a, a description I, I'm built like a dwarf <laughs> like the Lord of the Rings you know I, I'm 5 foot 6 86 kilos um, a, li- a little bit of a pot belly uh, and, and kind of broad and squat 
Yeah. Where, whereas Daddy's roughly the same <laughs> weight, but a lot taller. Yeah, I'm like six one. Yeah, Otherwise, it should be properly. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Danny's a, a human being who's actually in proportion. Yeah, yeah. All right. Well, some pieces. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, the weaponry though, we could get my dad in and talk a lot about that. He's oh. into that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's I mean, very knowledgeable and, just, and and getting um, getting uh, Macmillan singing in here would be great. As as far as I understand it, he, he's one of the people who brought a lot of these arts over into this part of the country. So. Yeah, he did. So that would be a, a lot of people came in after, but he yeah. was the one that um, brought it here. Yeah, and that that's going to be fantastic. But you brought um, Greater Jiu Jitsu here, really? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's there's other um, uh, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu schools, but not a Gracie school. No, there's a lot of sport gyms around. Yeah. We concentrate mostly on the self defense. His hoist is big on the self defense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. of his dad, Helio, yeah. Yeah, and, and that's that. That's you know where where the art comes from. The 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 art, including judo as well. Um, it, you know, stems from first 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 thing. So it's his self defense. And uh, um, we're not going to get into the sport versus uh, um, self-defense argument today. There's no argument. There one's one, one. Yeah. one's the other. Well, we will, we'll, you know, we'll, we will discuss that. We might discuss that today, to be honest. Yeah. But um, yeah, um, <laughs> you never know what it takes. Yeah, it. yeah, we don't know really. Um, but <laughs> that, that, that's the sort of crux of it. What, what, what one of the things that we're looking at is some of the things that, that, that how arts have progressed uh, and how they've changed over the years. And, and judo, we mentioned earlier, is a prime example of something that has changed from uh, a predominantly self-defense system, pieced together from, from various different schools of, um, of what you'd call traditional jiu-jitsu um, into something a bit you know, more accessible for the modern man. Um, which has now changed into a kind of a sport which has been sort of um, I would say go to say bastardised by the, the you know the Olympic Committee to make it into a sport yeah it had to have rules I guess yeah to make it mainstream yeah well I mean that's the, 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 that again is a, another sort of thing that the kind of same thing happened with Jiu Jitsu Jiu Jitsu yeah it kind of gripes me a little bit that it has to, to, to change to appeal to the masses I mean when did when did people and masses become so. Um, uh, when did their attention spans become so small that they can't watch? You know, and when when did they get so soft? When do people want to turn away from something that's a little bit bloody, a little bit? You know, that's part of us as human beings. I I, I personally think that human beings are inherently violent things. That's not to say <laughs> that that the, the violence is great and it's awesome and you should do that. You know, you should beat people in the street all the time. But I, I think that that is part of. No, but it should be for defence. Yeah, yeah. Like you had to defend villages. You had to defend your yeah. family. This is what martial arts is for. And like sport know. is one thing. If you want sport, go play football or rugby. Yeah, and 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 really, it, and truly, all sport is just mimics war. Especially team sports, so uh, you know. Think about how tribal people get with uh, football in this country, and in in you know over in America, American football people go mad for it. You mm. know, they paint their faces. It's like they're going to to yeah, war. You know, culture loves sport though. Yeah, they, they put a lot more time into it than we do over here. Yeah, yeah. everywhere yeah. you go. Yeah, yeah. But but then I, I think that that uh, go and and it's a good point place to start with really. Is uh, some of the cultural differences with with uh, places I, in America? They put a lot of. Um, it seems like from from over here, you know, uh, messages to correct us if you're from over the pond. But in America, they put a lot of effort into young people, you know, um, high school people, level people, um, people who are standout athletes. They put an enormous amount of effort into. But what about the rest of us? What about the rest of us who aren't standout athletes for the the, the sports that the country loves? Mm -hmm. You know. I, for example, me, you know, I'm not built for American football. I'm not big enough. You know, I'd need to be uh, the kind of build I am, but like six foot three, mm -hmm. to, to be, you know, anywhere near the kind of level that, that and, and that this is at 18, you know, I'd need to be a, a, a big boy. And, uh, or a basketballer, you know, I'm not really built for basketball. Mm. You know. This is what sport is. Like our Jiu Jitsu, to be a, a good athlete in Jiu Jitsu competition sport, you have to have a certain kind of physicality. Yeah, with our jiu jitsu because it's self defense, anyone should be able to do it. So it's, then it's technical with strength. This is the sports that we're talking about. If you don't fit the mold, you can't do it. Yeah. That, that's so it. the slogan jiu jitsu is for everyone sounds good, but it seems to be the ones that are built better for sport they get more attention from the teacher. Yeah. 
So the same is. What, what do you call that weird little moves that everyone's going nuts over at the moment? Uh, the Barimbo. Barimbo. Yeah, that's the position yeah. you're going upside down. Yeah. It's very good for the sport setting, but not good for a street fight. You know, yeah. or a self-defense situation, and it's not really the names or the moves because those moves are very effective for their sport. Yeah, but it wouldn't work in a self-defense situation. So that's why I believe there's not like it's not an argument, it's not a debate. There is sport and there is self-defense, yeah. and when you add punches, that's what changes it. So yeah, I mean to to be effective, the the reason why I chose that is because to be effective, it for look to be, you have to have good mobility. Mm -hmm. Like very good mobility yeah. and kind of sort of long stringy legs. Yeah, so I can't really. I'm, I'm long, but you know, for injuries over the years, I don't think. Yeah, I'm sure it, those kind of moves. That and, and 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 you know, I'm not saying any move that that's effective for you and your build it is you use it or use it, but yeah. it's not something that everyone can, is going to be able to do. But use it for the setting you can. Yeah, don't try and use it in the setting you can. No. I mean, you wouldn't see someone in, and I have seen it in MMA, but it's mm. used by someone who's built to do it. But MMA is a sport still. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and, and it's it's not, yeah, and that is another thing. Uh, MMA is still a sport. It's not um, actual fighting. It's still a, a sport yeah, setting. I'm, you're not saying, there's no way you could say that a, a UFC guy that fights in the UFC couldn't, he couldn't um, defend himself in the street. Cause, oh, 100%. Yeah, yeah, of course, yeah, of course yeah. he could. Yeah. But it still doesn't address the situation of distance management confrontation um, uh, management you know it's like it's all to do with are you ready are you ready mm. there's no negotiation skills there's no none of that yeah it's, it's all it's all pre predetermined you know what's gonna happen are you ready are you ready let's yeah. fight but in the street it doesn't work like that does it no we've got to address their dialogue to you know deceive us then to destroy us so it's, it, well, it's not just about fighting it's how you carry yourself in general and how you can negotiate and get away from situations and, and look quite a few of the, the, the MMA guys they're um, you know they come from self defence backgrounds so they're, they're already sort of versed in, in the things like distance management negotiation and some guys are just you know people like uh, someone like Matt Sierra for example if you watch him on TV he just doesn't really care who he has a confrontation with no. he's not he's just you, you know he's ready for, for, for confrontation as soon as he set, senses it yeah, it's the kind it's of thing very good but that doesn't that's not a good philosophy for a martial artist no it's, it's not. all well and good for us being able to, to fight whenever we, we can we're good fighters of course we can beat the average person up but it's our responsibility not to yeah yeah yeah, yeah. so if you don't follow a code one of the 753 code we follow here at our school if you don't have a philosophy behind your martial arts skills you can become like a bad person yeah so you can't let the MMA culture just because they're talking yeah, yeah. talking to each other on like oh I'm going to beat you up I'm going to kill you yeah. this becomes a culture in, in itself so um, it's good being violent and whatnot. I know you enjoy the combat sports and yeah, stuff, yeah 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 but it still can't leak into self defence no 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 and then those guys um you know, you know, they're they're on TV. They do that, mm -hmm. but behind closed doors, you'll probably find that a lot of them aren't nearly as confrontational as they first appear. Yeah, probably right. Yeah, and and others who appear. It's the self ticket. Yeah, who are who appear com who don't appear confrontational, mm -hmm. um, have proven otherwise outside of life. Um, you know, uh, I'm going to take a pick. John Jones is a prime example of someone who says one thing, but his actions have spelled another. Yeah. You know, he says, uh, you know, he's respectful, he's this and that, and then he does a hit and run on a pregnant woman. Or he's uh, has a fight in a press conference. Yeah, <laughs> you know, <laughs> and, uh, and and he, he appears like he's a, a softly spoken professional man, mm. but then he doesn't act like one. Yeah, it does doing coke probably doesn't help. No, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 and um, you know, uh, th th that's the the the, the uh, you know, there's um, a lot of uh, culture behind. In amateur wrestling, for example, you know I've seen it where um, people, especially in America, where they've got like folk style wrestling, and they've had like slogans like um, "Trample the weak, hurdle the dead" is a is one that um, <laughs> has come up before, um, and uh, things like um, "King of Sports, Sport of Kings." Um, the, you know the, the idea that the, only the strong surviving work in in wrestling is is a in the West, especially. It, is really prevalent, but say in Turkey, um, you know, a wrestler always rises is is a is a better, perhaps sort of uh, speech to live by. That's my, 
and I've just butchered that quote. Sorry, guys. <laughs> but um, but, but the, the, a quote I did want to butcher this time round was uh, from Sun Tzu, wh- who says, you know, um, to win every battle is not supreme excellence. Supreme excellence is to win without ever having to come to battle. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that that should really be your uh, goal as a martial artist. This is the way I see it. Heather Gracie's philosophy. Yeah. Also. You know, you, you, the, 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 right, the right words can diffuse the, the, the situation. So being intelligent is more important than fighting. Yeah. And, and understand what's at stake when, when you fight. I mean, um, it, it is fighting for uh, pride. Is pride worth it, for example? If someone says, yo, you're a dickhead, you fucking prick. You know, and you you think you're going to go and 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 go smack them in the face, and now you're going to have a confrontation, a, a violent confrontation in the street. Um, you know, well, is that something you really want to do? No, not really. No. If someone calls you a dickhead, who cares? You've got to treat them like a kid. Yeah, a five year old kid comes up to you. I think this is Hedo Gracie's philosophy. Also, a five year old kid comes up to you and says, "Oi, dickhead!" You know, the kid shouldn't say that at that age. But yeah. if he comes up to you and swear, would you crack him across the face? No. And start hurling abuse back at him? No, you treat him like a kid. But that comes from confidence of your martial arts skills. Yeah. doesn't mean you have to beat them up. It means you let them off. Yeah, and as a person. Um, you know, you have to be confident as a person and, and carry yourself well and, mm-hmm. and, and, not, and be careful not to um, just smash people around for the sake of it. That's a bad, just bad thing to do. Yeah. But going back in history... We don't really have to um, beat people up and defend our land, do we? No, um, no. This and that. We, we're, we're self-defense. We're just trying to defend ourselves if something arises in a club or someone's trying to mug you in the street. But these guys here, and, um, back in the day, they had to defend their mm. villages and towns. Yeah. And, and, and to draw sort of like things like, um, to, to, to draw on them and say, this is the way that we should be, this is it, you know, Perhaps not because the context, the the, the the way the way they think, um, you know, in history, something that's really prevalent is xenophobia. You know, people were afraid of each other. There's no doubt about that, and they were afraid of each other for, for you know good reason. You know, uh, say for example, the the, the Saxons were quite uh, you know fairly afraid of the, the Vikings, but probably that's because the Saxons were invaders themselves only a few hundred years before. You know, they knew what they knew what the consequences were if they'd allowed a whole other people to invade them, mm-hmm. uh, because they'd forced that on others. You know, their language, their culture would change. Uh, they perhaps would become second-class citizens in their own land. Mm-hmm. You know, and, and that's was what was at stake. These days, um, you know, self-defense. The only, the, the the main thing that might be at stake, say, if you got mugged, you know, it might be a, a few pounds in your wallet or dollars if you're over the uh, pond there. If you want, you know, lesser currencies. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, please don't stop listening because I said that. <laughs> um, but yeah, the, 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 there's not as much at stake, hmm. you know. Um, and we don't. Well, depending on how far the mugger wants to take it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, your life might be at stake. Mm-hmm. Um, but but for these people, a lot of these people, their entire culture, their families, their their villages, their their towns, their nation was at stake. Yeah, you know, and they had to fight for it, and um, they had to be prepared. Mm-hmm. And uh, you know, it's really interesting the way they prepare. We, you know, we think that that a lot of people think that the best way to do something is to to, to be as high tech as possible with it. You know, go to um, go. You know, that's the optimal thing. Go to you know a, a gym with a um, hundred different machines and, and fantastic treadmills and, and it's all clean and squeaky and that's the optimal way because it looks new and modern and, and to be honest it's not the optimal way you know the, the the first of all you don't get that kind of mindset to, to struggle through adversity or and be creative you don't get a creative mindset from from following um preset patterns um also these kind of things like machines and that they, they ingrain patterns into you and that's bad you, you want to be more free with your movement. Um, I'm not talking Ido Portal free movement time because that's that I will get to that. However, because that that really irritates Did me. Go to the park, <laughs> touch each other. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> but touch. <laughs> um, you know that that's not. The, um, you know that's a, again something that that's um, you know quite old old systems masquerading as, as as brand new and modern and, and innovative and it, it's not 
Um, but so one of the first things, I mean, I've recently wrote wrote, wrote an article about um, Spartans and uh, the why you know the the way that they they lived and um, really it, it, at the end of it, I gave give a little training program and um, for three days a week, I, I recommend you could do some sort of wrestling. So whether that be um, jiu jitsu wrestling or judo. Um, or, or even if you do like MMA, um, if you have a pancreation club near you, um, that would be cool. So you mean some kind of grappling system? Yeah, come, some kind of grappling system, because the, the, the Greeks as a whole were really, really into grappling. Really into grappling. Mm-hmm. And uh, the way they grappled um, was probably really similar to catch wrestling. What, what we, had, you know, the modern catch. It's um, probably... Very, very effective. Yeah, yeah, very, very effective... Um, but as far as you can tell, pins were were also in there. So things like um, fighting from a guard or what have you probably wouldn't have happened oh. because because you know there, there were there were rules and pinfalls to stop them killing each other. Yeah, but that guard only came in really with Helio. He he yeah. really developed the guard. Yeah, yeah. So before then, not so much. Yeah, yeah. I it mean, was there, there, but not as much. It's yeah. It's it's not a, a position where people would. Uh, oh yeah, let's attack. They wouldn't practice. Yeah, you know, yeah, it'd be like a defensive situation if they ended up there. Yeah, yeah. and so um, catch wrestling would, is probably the closest. But I understand, you know, not everyone's going to be near a catch wrestling club. No. Um, if you're in the US, um, th- there's not many. Um, if you're in the UK, there's even less. If you're in Japan, there's quite a few. You're more likely to find judo. Yeah, but you're more likely. Yeah. yeah. Uh, judo in, in Europe um, if you're listening over in France you won't find a single catch wrestling um, gym you, there will be some sort but some sort of grappling mm-hmm. um, and then the, the strength program is the strength portion of it is, is two days a week um, it's mostly body weight um, although there are things like uh, tyre flips and hammer on tyre and, and that's because uh, the Greeks were also into um, stone lifting but not stone lifting like strong men do uh, stone lifting and stone turning, so they they, they flip flip stones or they turn stones, really really big stones. Um, Hercules is said to have, um, you know, lifted a four hundred kilo stone. Hercules, real person. <laughs> <laughs> um, but you know, uh, again, also Hercules was said to have uh, defeated the Nemean lion with pancration. You know the other, the green sport, the big lion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. the 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 lion with the skin that couldn't be pierced by any weapon. Really? Yeah, and and so he any weapon at the time. Yeah, so he um he wrestled it and then smashed it with a club. Yeah, <laughs> so, and then no need to pierce it; it's dead no. now. Um, <laughs> Just going clubbing. But uh, things like that. I mean, a lot of myths stem from from reality, and um, there must have been a man like Hercules. Um, Back then, um, they, they were there. He, in all, you know, big people aren't a new thing. You know, I mean, the, the, we look at strong men now. I think, wow, people like that never existed. But they would have been really big, strong people, uh, because people did do things that would make them strong. I mean, if you think about some of the strongest people in the world, probably never competed in strength sports ever. You know, there's farmers out there who are just just tanks. Yeah. It's like the old thing. I mean, there's the, the best footballer in the world, but there could be one guy just never like yeah. touch football. Just an eight to them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and and strength is something that, that it is born in some people. Mm. Um, so things like that, things like that in history will will um, will, will come about, and we'll look we'll look a bit further into that. I mean, the, the legend of Hercules and, and all of his deeds, I would say, will probably all of these deeds were committed by various different people and uh, they, they've they been exaggerated over the years. Like they've been a storybook. Yeah, yeah, and, and, and put into to one, you know, attributed to one man. Um, you know, there was a, I read an article that reckoned that uh, Beowulf, uh, the Grendel wasn't, a, you know, a troll or anything like that. It was a, a really, really, really big brown bear that was terrorising this village. You know, ripping people apart. It was huge because people were making it angry, hunting near its its ground. Um, you know, throwing things at it. You know, hitting it with with arrows. And so Beowulf comes along and kills it. 
you know, which would be a, a serious feat in itself to to to, to kill a bear, uh, but not something that's impossible. Um, uh, Alexander Emilienko is, is said to have done that, uh, killed a bear in a traditional Russian style, which is where they 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 get some sort of um, Fedor's brother. Yeah, Fedor's brother. They get some sort of um, prop. And they they shove the prop into the bear into the ground they pull this big old knife and then just stab the bear yeah. but you know I know that, that a lot of people would say oh that's terrible that's animal cruelty and it is it's needlessly killing a, a, a wild animal but Jesus Christ it's a bear <laughs> I mean come on <laughs> with a knife <laughs> <laughs> and people still do this you know this, is, this isn't something that's far removed from the western world this is something that goes on in Russia you know that, that is how true is that story with Joe Rogan? You know, the, which Joe, Joe Rogan, the what, commentator what, for the UFC, killed like a mountain cat or something. I have no idea no whether idea. He, he did or, or I not. I don't know. Um, I, I can't just on Facebook. I don't know what's true in there or not. He, he says that, that something about him hunting. Hmm. I know he's a, a keen hunter, isn't he? Hmm. Um, Voices as well. It's not something that, that I've ever done, but then I, I live in England, so I don't really. There, a, there's nothing really to hunt except deer. Hmm. And B, if I wanted to to eat a deer, um, on my way to on the walk to work, where I work at a place called Estover, it's, there's lots of deer that roam. And one day, I was walking, and there's a deer dead on the side of the road that's been hit by a car, and someone's just dragged it. And I was like, oh, if only I had a car, I could take that home. <laughs> you know, and th- you should have carried it on your back. <laughs> and then I would have been like a some sort of dwarf. <laughs> Yeah. We'll make a cut out of it after. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I can see you doing that though. Um, I, I, I've been around people who were keen, um, uh, keen at, at hunting deer, and, and, and before, um, back when uh, I did a bit of reenactment for a couple of years, and, and some of the guys were showing me how to skin animals and 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 then prepare them for cooking and what have you. Um, that was that was quite cool. Uh, that that's another thing I want to get onto um, later on. There's lots of things we're going to get onto, but. The, the, the fallacy of, uh, you know, the, the, the pitfalls of reenactment and living history and, and how it can warp our ideas. Um, a, a lot of people are going to really hate this, but, but they're, really, they're big holes in, in living history. And one of them is the fact that, that, that you set up a little camp. No one lives in a frigging camp um, for a start. You know, these people lived in, in, in a lot of people lived in stone houses. Um, they've been tradesmen, craftsmen, and, and no one can really, really, um, show true craftsmanship without having a building without, you know, you can't be a blacksmith without a, a really big forge. Um, you can't show that art off with a little tiny forge made of wood. You know, it's not going to work. Um, the other thing is, you know, people, um, you know, tiny little camps, where people are, you know, dressed up as knights, but they don't have any servants. You know, these people would have done hardly anything on their own. So movies, yeah, yeah, they got they, they had to make it like as easy as affordable as possible on sets as well, didn't they? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's probably influenced a lot of history. And and to make these people more palatable, uh, I suppose, like um, knights, you know, the, the knight is it spans a really long era, but knights as a whole. Um, especially those who fought fought a lot, because a knight doesn't necessarily mean that you fight. Um, knights who fought in war probably weren't very uh, pleasant people to be around. Um, they are they're born soldiers, you know. They're born warriors, and, and their soldiers were beneath them. You know, they're, they're, they're you know things like archers and, and the middle class. They're, they're beneath them because these people will come from the warrior class. You know, mm. they come from a warrior caste. They were, from the moment they're, they're, they're born, they're told that they are going to fight. They're going to be knights. When you grow up, son, boy, you're going to be a knight. You're going to carry a sword and you're going to ride into battle. And you're going to, and if so, if you must, you must die an honorable death. That is the idea they have. And that's not a particularly palatable idea to put through a movie. Uh, so we have, we, we form this idea, chivalry is um, being polite. Well, chivalry really isn't about being polite. Chivalry is about not giving in. Chivalry is about um, always facing confrontation head on, never shying away, never being afraid. And um, if you defeat an opponent who is from a chivalrous class, from from the warrior caste, um, show him respect. Don't kill him. Um, don't. Same as like the Bushido code. 
Yeah, it's very, very, very similar. D don't kill him. Don't, um, you know, dishonour his name. You know, he fought, if he fought honourably, then treat him well. You know, and and that's the, that's what chivalry is. Chivalry is not about holding doors open for ladies. Chivalry is about war. Chivalry is about the, the fighting classes, um, recognising each other and recognising that warrior spirit and and that, that ideal that they both share. Uh, there's a story of um, one Scot, what one English knight surrounded by Scottish knights um, in his castle. He was being besieged, and he um, got on his horse, gripped his lance, and rode out of his um, castle, and promptly got knocked off by about six knights. But they sent him back, all okay, you know, sent him back to his castle. He didn't die, um, but he rode out on his own for what reason? No one knows. Because there's no point in him trying to fight an entire army on his own, but he was prepared to do that, and, and that's what a lot of people are prepared to do, and that's what's, you know, uh, but that's what what people see in the samurai, for example. Uh, uh, but that's very, very similar across lots of cultures. Uh, these warrior castes have this idea that 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 um, death before dishonor, uh, and the idea that they have to fight because that's what they were born to. They were born to be fighters, and therefore their life holds no meaning without fighting. Mm. And we principles of a warrior. Yeah, and we simply don't have that anymore, and that's probably a good thing. Yeah, we we follow, you, you know, we follow a code called the seven five three here at our school. Mm. Um, but yeah, not as you know, this day and age is not for war, is it? It's the no principles of code we should live by. Yeah, yeah. So our seven five three code is seven principles of a warrior which would be the same as the Bushido. Mm. The five is the keys to health. You know, the three is mindset. So it's, um, yeah, you don't have to follow them to be a warrior. It's like for us, we just do it for, to be a good human being and to keep ourselves healthy. Yeah, yeah. I mean, a, a lot of people would, would, you know, take up martial arts and the idea that, you know, they want to, perhaps you, you look in the mirror and you think, Jesus Christ, what happened to me? I used to be a bit of a stud and now I am... Closing in on 30, 40, 50, I'm flabby, uh, yeah. I'm out of shape, uh, and, and you know, I really want to do something that's fun, but, but yeah. I don't want to go to your, some... Your relationship with life and your physical activities has to change yeah. as you get older. doesn't mean you shouldn't do anything, it just means you have to be a bit smarter. You know, uh, 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 when I first really got into training, um, uh, and, I, and I did get into training at first, you know, I, I wrestled, and then I... I got into uh, drugs a bit uh, and alcohol and um, that for a few years and then got really into strength training. I was like, I'm going to be as strong as possible. I'm going to fuck shit up. You know, I am going to smash every single weight I see in my life. So um, I uh, found the nearest powerlifting, um, powerlifting club. I uh, went there for a little while, then found a place called the Commando Temple and it started to open my eyes to the idea that you don't have to attack everything like a lunatic. You don't have to to to, to go into training with the idea that, that oh, it's going to be your last. See the thing, like this is why the Valente brothers in Miami, um, the Jiu Jitsu school, I go there every year in December. They they develop this seven five three code. The five is very important to keep yourself um, healthy, so it's rational nutrition, mm. a good nutritional regime. Um, sensible exercise, sensible exercise. You're yeah. not like breaking your back to lift that yeah. strong weight. Yeah, yeah. Uh, efficient rest. So you, you know, obviously after training you need to rest, but mm. sometimes you don't. Proper hygiene and positive attitude. Yeah. So, but if one of those are off, they're all off. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, yeah the mindset you had was let's go crush and smash and this and that. Yeah. But you would have picked up injuries. Yeah, yeah, and, 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 I, and I certainly did. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, not, not, not particular. Not huge injuries I'm a fairly robust person but you know I won't be robust forever no. you know and, and, and that is a point you know um, we were talking um, a couple of, was it a couple of weeks back it would be just yeah. after Hoist Gracie had fought um, Ken Shamrock and um, it, it really sort of really sort of opened the idea that you know back in the day Ken Shamrock was a really powerful guy you know yeah. really really strong it, even for his size he was a strong guy yeah and, and quite skilled but Hoyce was very skilled um, 
it is re- you know very fit very yeah he's got a lot of endurance so yeah, yeah i've hung around him a lot and he tires me out just from day-to-day activities just walking around he's, yeah, got so much energy. he's got a lot of energy but he's always been been fairly used to being the weaker man in the fight yeah uh, and you know now he's in his his late 40s he's still the weaker man in the fight but he's always been used to it yeah but he's accumulated all, all this technique big, yeah yeah, yeah. He, he's not only is he has he got great endurance but he's enormously skilled and skill it, it is the, the same can be applied for for strength really i mean i i'm just working with a, a strong first coach um mm. called um adam gregus and, and we're working on kettlebell movements and uh, the idea in strong first is uh strength always but but it has to be skilled strength so um, the movement has to be good uh, and and the, the the movement has to be precise and you have to breathe the right way to get the maximum out of it because if you're not doing something right you're just ingraining a, a bad movement pattern uh, and then when you ingrain bad movement patterns um you can lead to injuries however if you ingrain a good movement pattern but you're weaker than the other person you won't leak power for example you know I, i've got this thing where i collapse my my core and it, it could be taking away a good 20 percent of my power but if i if i learn to not collapse it when say I um, do a suplex on someone, I can be in way, way, way more powerful. Mm. Uh, I wouldn't, it wouldn't sap so much energy. Um, if, if you guys follow MMA, uh, following an interview after the Conor McGregor fight with uh, Nate Diaz, um, he said I was inefficient with my energy, and Nate, Nate wasn't, and, and it really was yeah, true. He was very honest with his yeah. loss as well. He, you know, and it is about being efficient. You can be really, really, really strong. And you can have not so great endurance, um, but if you're careful with the amount of energy you expend, the other person can get really tired really quickly because they're not careful about the energy they expend. Sounds like Gracie Jiu Jitsu. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, and you have to be. And that's something I'm still learning. I will we'll, we'll be honest with people. I've only just started, uh, since I've come down here, I've only just started not to try and wrestle people, as it were, not to try and grip them as hard as possible and pull them into my chest. Yeah, you know that's something that I've learned to stop learning rather to stop doing. Not yeah, it's um, our jiu jitsu is very light but efficient. Yeah, mm. we're not trying to crush anybody. You know, yeah, we're just trying to save energy, be efficient in our movement, like you're talking about, and take them out when they're weak. As Heather Gracie said, they're they're strong in the beginning of the movement. At the end, you got to get catch them in the middle. Yeah, so. And there's there's parallels in that with with, with other uh, with other ancient systems. Uh, I mean, um, for example, um, when people practice kushti, um, a, a sort of a, a Middle Asian style um, style of wrestling, a lot of their training revolves around maces and using like big, big heavy maces to swing yeah. around their shoulders. What for their training? For their training, yeah. Like. And, um, the Bulgarian bag type movement, kind of, yeah. They, they, they swing like these big, like essentially like sledgehammers, and they swing them around. But they're, they're big maces and balls. Oh, and, like and the club, they, like clubs, clubs yeah, very similar to clubs. And um, they do clubs as well. Got a couple here actually, and, and, and that helps with shoulder mobility and, and being healthy. That's mm. about how being uh, strong and healthy at the same time. Yeah. And it, it doesn't take away from, say, for example, your, your grappling because it doesn't ingrain a weird movement pattern in. No. Fish, uh, you know, you've got you've got to have uh, functional movement, haven't you, with mm-hmm. your sport or style you're practicing? There's yeah. something we need to, we need to talk to as well. Uh, one of my, my physio conditioning coach is called Paris Payne, and yeah. it's all about movement, all about efficiency, and he's probably a very good person to bring in and talk to. His knowledge is incredible. I mean, we are going to have quite a few guests on here uh, I mean I'm looking yeah, to have, be amazing. I'm going to have a look to have um, a, a you know a different guest every week and some will be university professors mm-hmm. some who will be better better be better able to um, lead our podcast on a proper yeah. direction and tangent this has gone but, yeah, this, way off this is but. good though because it, it gives us an overview of what future podcasts are going to be yeah and um, even Hoist Gracie will come in in July and do one and you know, yeah. a few people, whenever they're around, that come and visit our academy, we'll set up a podcast. And it is about training, so 
if not people if we don't talk and go off on one people don't know what we're about so yeah, I think that, it's that is, yeah that, that is that is that is it I mean I'm not going to tell you how to train because there's a million and one um, fantastic training systems out there I mean people uh, you know CrossFit for example gets a lot of a lot of hate and a lot of bad bad press um, but and it but really, if it's executed well, um, it can be a good training system. Yeah, I just think some of the, the CrossFit things I hear about is a lot of injuries. But is it because they're two bigger classes and the, the, the individual structure there, the structure there can't give them as much? Uh, yeah, I, I think it's down to, to the, the individual gym. Yeah. You know, there's terrible gyms in, in everything. Um, I've I've yeah. seen some terrible strength gyms. It's not CrossFit. The name's not bad, right? Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. not the, the, the franchise because there'll be some good instructors in one. one Bad instructors in another. The yeah, same yeah. as any martial arts school you're going to go to. So I don't think you can, you know, label every gym at CrossFit as bad or no, not good. No, so, yeah. you know, essentially the the, the 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 strength endurance. You know, essentially what's behind CrossFit is strength endurance. That's what it is, mm. and there's nothing wrong with that. There are loads of systems are like it. Um, there are systems which keep better and tighter control over their instructors. Um, but they're not going to be perfect. They're never going to be perfect. Don't forget, it's a franchise. They need to open places. Yeah. And sometimes they need to grab the person that's willing to do it. Yeah. I mean, I mean, you're not going to go. Not every single jiu-jitsu school is going to be a fantastic place to train. No. Uh, they have qualities. Yeah. But not in all areas. Yeah. It is. That's just the way it is. That you're probably never going to go to a, to a perfect training school, but you can get down close to it. Mm. Um, and really, we've been waffling on for nearly four or five so, minutes. Yeah, so what we need is to tell them the direction what we're going to discuss, like uh, which which coaches, some civilizations, some time periods. So we're going to look through the training regimes, aren't we? So yeah, I mean, so next week, um, on the next podcast, that is, um, we are going to look at um, British martial arts. And when I say British martial arts, I, I mean martial arts that have um, arisen from Britain, uh, who, which are historically British over the, the past you know, few thousand years. So um, we're going to look at um, catch wrestling. We're going to look at uh, Cornish wrestling. Um, we're going to have we're going to talk about things like um, Gleamer, uh, talk about how um, you know, the, 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 there were there were systems uh, of uh, fighting which are real similar to traditional jiu-jitsu in terms of uh, which knights would practice. You know, um, young squires would wrestle, um, and they'd wrestle in a way that, that that helped them on the battlefield. You know, much like you know the traditional jiu-jitsu. Mm-hmm. And we're going to talk about um, where these systems are going, um, where they're at now. Um, a prime example of something which is um, ingrained in British culture, but it ha- is very odd, is boxing. You know, um, box- Britain is arguably one of the greatest boxing nations on the planet. But boxing itself sort of disappeared for uh, maybe a couple of thousand years nearly. You know, it, it was in the, the classical world and then it's gone. And then it's back. Mm. Especially in the West, I mean things like uh, Danby, a uh, t- uh, traditional African style of boxing, has always been around, unbroken since uh, since the first pharaohs. But the, our style of boxing, you know, the the, the um, what boxing are we talking about? Are we talking about the Queensbury Rules boxing, or are we talking about yeah, the, the, the kind of Queensbury Rules boxing, but mm. pre. Queensby rules. Okay. Yeah. So you know it, the seventeenth, seventeenth century. There's the well, line. Yeah. Meet the scratch. Get up. Yeah. Yeah. This is yeah th- that kind of boxing or where it came from. You know, a catch wrestling has a. See, see, boxing is a, is what I would call um, a, uh, a martial art with a broken history, whereas um, catch wrestling has an unbroken lineage mm. to to uh, classical Germanic people, and Celtic people. You know, uh, Cornish wrestling is an unbroken art for more than than, than three thousand years. Yeah, my uncle was, was yeah. a Cornish wrestler. Yeah, the, it, its practice is unbroken. Mm-hmm. But uh, so, for, uh, and jujitsu is um, its art is unbroken since the the fourteenth century in Japan. You know, um, although there were systems very similar to it, jujitsu itself is it, yeah is unbroken since since the fourteenth century. 
So we're like going to talk about earlier in India. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and and we're going to look at these systems and how something because it gets broken and then reconstructed, how it changes. You know, um, boxing. Uh, it, for, if you look at Danby, which is very similar to to what we think ancient Egyptians. Uh, how they boxed and you look at modern boxing and Queensby rules boxing how different it is how when we try to reconstruct an art how we change it because we're doing that with western martial arts historical what he might West, historical western martial arts we're taking these little books these old fight books uh, and we're trying to interpret something which hasn't been practiced for a long time and it it does mutate it. It's like trying to put the dinosaur bones back together, right? Yeah, yeah. And then uh, they never understand that they've got feathers. Yeah. <laughs> it's like you're going to miss a lot of details unless you were actually there. Yeah, yeah. You, you know, and you are. And you're going to miss a lot of details as well because you try and practice it in a safe, modern environment with people who didn't give a shit about safety. Mm -hmm. You know, um, so when we're looking at, say, uh, prime examples of Brook in front of me is the Galaglass. And these guys fought with axes. Uh, they picked the biggest and strongest um, boys from villages uh, to be part of the Galaglass. And uh, and that means, um, and they'd be really rough with them. You know, th th they were chosen for a reason. And if they didn't make it up to scratch, they'd be kicked out of the clan. Simple as. Yes. So if, if you, you know, if you, if you weren't rough and you weren't ready, um, you weren't fucking interested. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, yeah. Like making the squad. Yeah, it is mo like making a D1 wrestling squad. You, you only the strong survive, and that's the way. That, that's the way it had to be. Going um, back to the beginning. Of yeah, it. but but now we've got people who are trying to pick up a, pick up swords uh, and um, reconstruct martial arts, who are unfit. Yeah, can you do it without the element of? actually fighting yeah so it does it becomes ineffective because they're not having to use it yeah so mm, you'll never be as good as them unless no. we go back to fighting with swords yeah uh, unless yeah unless without, armor, you can't. Like, without any real yeah uh, that's it I mean you can't you can't stand in a room with soft swords and say that no you practice the same system as they did when they were actually using it on the battlefields it just won't be as yeah. that it won't be you'll, you'll get close you get close, but it will never be. You have what? that element of fear, and you'll never be as sharp as those guys were. No, I so. mean it, it's just not going to happen. I mean, uh, there, there's um, well, the, probably the biggest parallel in the modern world against the ancient is um, MMA against gladiatorial combat, and some people will 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 love that, and other people will will, will hate the idea. Think it's I'll barbaric. Love it. I love it. But but gladiatorial combat. Uh, what people don't understand is gladiatorial combat was not to the death. You know, very rarely did did gladiators die. It took years and years to train a gladiator. He'd have to be strong, fit, healthy. They'd have to feed him. They'd have to clothe him. They'd have to give him prostitutes. It's a big investment just to yeah. die. <laughs> yeah, you know, uh, to, they'd have to give him prostitutes to to motivate him. Because he has to be motivated. You can't just say I'm going to kill you if you don't fight. I'm going to kill you because some people don't don't care. Because you've already taken everything away by enslaving him. But if you give him that motivation, he might fight. And that's what they did. They made turned him into superstars. You know, gladiators were superstars. They were the the, the, the boxers of the day. Uh, the, the, the the sports stars of the day. And that the gladiatorial combat is a sport. It's a yes, it was a bloody sport. Um, but not as bloody as you might think. Uh, and the, the, you know, the idea the gladiators went into into the arena thinking they were going to survive you know that they're, they're in their head they were going to live and just like MMA fighters go into uh, a fight thinking they're going to come out alive they, they, they know that if something really bad really happens that a doctor's going to stop it and they're going to come in and, and that's a good parallel to draw that's more like uh, modern society and modern martial arts than say um, people thinking that they're freaking ninjas yeah we're not going to come any closer than MMA are we to the gladiatorial days I don't think with the mainstream like, no you're not going to have people with swords and shields yeah, cutting that's just small slices pretty, pretty much it yeah. and you don't know maybe some of these fighters don't love martial arts or as much as they love the crowd cheering them on yeah so the motivation could not just be for the win it could be just for the, you know, the crowd the feeling and you know, the glory the glory yeah. Yeah. yeah so that's probably what you had back then yeah, yeah, you know, they, they, they love the glory, mm. but it, it in when it when it comes to war, 
There's no real glory in war. There's just survival. Yeah. See, this is the thing. We've got a guy trains, that trains self-defense or martial arts for self-defense to a guy that trains for sport. Mm. Sport guy. They win a medal, they win another one. Yeah. We're doing it only to protect our families and for health and, you know, yeah. for good life. So oh. that's, the, that's the parallel. There's although, one and the other. Although I love glory. Yeah, yeah, we have loved it in the past. Like yeah. I have, like I competed, so I can't say, you know, I didn't love my hand being raised. But now I think your relationship changed with with things as you get older, and you know, when you're your family and stuff, you don't really want to be going on with your face punched in. Or I mean, I, I like just to test my metal. I like just to see where I'm at. It could just be person. yeah, it, lifting yeah. weights or being a strong man, right? Not yeah, about fighting. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, I like to, to test myself in in every arena that I, I practice, uh, and yeah. um, part of this podcast is putting it out there. Um, you know, testing yourself, um, and, and I always want to do that. I always want to be competitive. I can't yeah. stop it. Me and uh, me and my fiance, we went to uh, went to a bowling alley and there was some air hockey, and I couldn't stop myself. I was like, ah, I'm, <laughs> I'm gonna win. I'm on the same one. Yeah, yeah the same one. That's it. I'm gonna beat you. Yeah, the kids, they ain't winning it, snakes and ladders. Yeah, that's no it. No chance. No, no way. You're gonna teach. I'm gonna teach you right now <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> what I'm all about. I'm all about winning. <laughs> yeah, it's not gonna get any better for you. Like. <laughs> yeah. Right, and and so th- that's what we're gonna look at, and we're gonna close it here. Um, I'm gonna say uh, uh, I'm gonna give it a big shout out to um, my coach. Uh, my coach is Adam Gregus. Uh, I'm gonna give a big shout out to uh, my physio, Kyle Simpson. And uh, a big shout out to my, the, the strength training facility, uh, Plymouth Performance Gym. Um, and obviously, um, Danny will give you uh, a big shout out for his uh, McMillan's. We're recording right now, but I will also mention it like I just did then. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, so yeah, a big shout out to Hoist Gracie, of course, like my teacher, the Atlantic Brothers in Miami, my dad, Danny McMillan, same name, Helio Gracie, right there. He wouldn't, well, none of this would be possible for me. And yeah, just give a shout out to my new academy opening up at the beginning of uh, April, which is Hoist Gracie Jiu Jitsu Southwest. It's going to be on the main strip in uh, Mutley Plain in Plymouth. You're all welcome to come along and train in self defense and even MMA with another coach there, Sean White, who's going to be running the MMA program. So if you want to fight, there's that. If you want self defense, there's me. Right, awesome. Thanks, guys. Listen again, or I'll kick the shit out of you. <laughs>